Growing up in the 90s and being a huge fan of comic books and especially like badass women in comic books, I was down with She, Lady Death, Gen 13, Dawn, very obscure, but even more obscure than Dawn, it's barbed wire. Pamela Anderson, CJ Parker, starring in a superhero movie has to make huge money, right? Let's talk about it. So I went into this with massive nostalgia and boy howdy does this knock it out of the park for everything that I wanted right out the gate. We got Pamela Anderson getting sprayed down, doing like a strip scene. This was awesome, especially the unrated version. It's a standard action film, but there's a couple differences. Sexy. Very sexy. I'm not gonna expose too many of my fetishes here today, but I feel this was influential in a few of them. Did you wash your hands? No. I was bad. Barbed Wire is a kick-ass bounty hunter, bar owner, pretend prostitute. You a cop? <laughs> See a badge? She uses her prostitution to coax Johns into either giving her money or just like getting her into certain buildings where she can get her bounty. So to set the scene, Barb Wire lives in the only free city in America in 2017. She is what people go to when they want to get shit done. Barb seems to own the only bar in town, the Hammerhead. All the people are going there, they're having a good time, they're drinking, cops go there, the government officers, they're going there. That's where business gets done. She's got her brother just a drunk at the bar who's lost his vision because he was in the war. She was also in the war, which we find out via a very weird flashback, and that's where her acting suffered the most, <laughs> I think. Where's Axel? He's not here, he's not coming! We have Udo Kier, who's basically her Alfred. She's a bounty hunter, and we have another bounty hunter in this movie, too. We got Django fed up in this bitch. We've got Axel, and we've got Cora D. Am I interrupting something? And they're trying to get to Canada, and she's trying to escort them. But Clint Howard is like this guy who has stumbled upon these very important contact lenses. All of this is over a set of Bausch and Lombs? And he's a snaky little son of a bitch. You're gonna regret not dealing with me. You're gonna regret this very, very much. He walks into the hammerhead, he like magnetizes them to the kitchen counter, and basically barbed wire is gonna be fucked. Now, find a reason to search the hammerhead. As you wish, Colonel. I did like the supporting cast because they're important, except I didn't understand the relationship between Axel, Cora D, and why barbed wire would even talk to them because this is an ex-boyfriend of hers. I'm irresistible to females. So she's just like, well, I'm going to Canada. You guys want to go to Canada? All right, let's go. Yet she doesn't go to Canada in the end. But shout out to Tiny Lister. I'm gonna get to the back of the line. <laughs> if you want to hire any bouncer, especially in Steel Harbor, you hire Debo. Here come Debo, give me your stuff. Oh, shit. What's up, Smoke? No. What you got on my drink? No. Is this movie as bad as people seem to say it was at the time or as they remember it to be? Ooh, donuts. We watched the Siskel and Ebert review. Mm -hmm. Siskel hated it. Ebert wasn't bored by it, but he didn't think it was a good movie. I was thinking about what Ingrid Bergman would look like in uh, Fredericks of Hollywood clothing because that's really the attraction here. And is more concerned with special effects and violence and how many different ways Pam Anderson's brassiere can be photographed. If you look on a bunch of lists, just like looking this up, everybody hates this movie. I get why it was a failure. They were trying to leverage like an unpopular franchise based on one actor alone. You're just like, okay, I wanna see Pamela Anderson in bondage gear. And out of bondage gear. Maybe Pamela Anderson didn't have as big of an appeal as they thought to like, just be like, put her in a movie and it's gonna succeed. And then I think that if people went in not knowing what this movie really is about, they went just based off of Pamela Anderson, mm -hmm. they're gonna get bored because the plot is just kind of like, it's all long, over the place. it's convoluted, you're not really paying attention to it. I thought Pamela Anderson herself did an awesome job. She was the action star I hoped she would be. It's like she rips off that fucking, the leg of the table so she can get that money shot with the two guns. Mm -hmm. She has some really, Hilarious lines. You really know your stuff, babe. What did you call me? Don't call me babe. It seems like an inspiration to almost something like Sin City, at least the first half of this movie. The car plus the cash 
Not a bad night's work. The first half of this movie has almost a completely different tone than the last half. You have like some noir aspects, you have like an inner monologue. The lighting is even different where you have more shadows and just like the eyes in frame. But then it just turns into an action movie at the end, like you're typical fare. If you look at like Batman, he plays it very kind of monotone. I think it's similar in that kind of respect. She's just kind of like someone who doesn't want to be part of anything. And yeah. she's just like, leave me alone. I'm neutral. She says it. Rumor has it that you used to fight with the resistance. I'm neutral. I'm a businesswoman, Colonel. Perhaps we can do business. She just wants to stay middle of the road, make her money, do her bounties, <laughs> run that bar. Maybe one day, Tired to nice sunny Canada. It's a pleasure doing business with you, Barb. If it was a pleasure, Schmidt, I'd charge you more. The acting isn't that bad, you think? What about Fatso? I love Big Fatso. Big Fatso eating his turkey leg, gonna eat Clint Howard, I guess. It brings us back more to like the comic book side of things because that does get lost. I think that's the issue. There are big action scenes at the beginning. And at the end, there's also big action scenes. But the middle, there's about 40 minutes where not a lot happens. It's almost just like a lot of back and forth about nonsense that doesn't matter. And I can totally understand why people wouldn't like this. And that sucks because going back like, I had great memories of this movie because, well, I remembered Pamela Anderson. And then going back, you're like, why is half of this boring? You don't really care for Barbed Wire, the character. We don't get any sense of kind of like what the world is like. How is this a free city, but the Congressional Council is coming in and just like still doing shit? Like what happens on the outside? It's a congressional matter. I can assure you, citizen. There's just like a lot of conversation and it doesn't progress the story, I guess. They developed a disease that wiped out all of Topeka, Kansas. And now Cora D was part of the group that did that. She developed a vaccine for that not to happen, but she needs to get to Canada so she can talk to the like truth and reconciliations and UN so that they can understand what's happening in the US and develop the vaccine to fight against the Congress. So it's not about bubble baths. There's a big <laughs> deep story about a civil war and everything that happens, but it all gets lost because it's in that like, our midsection that you don't care what's going on. And this is part of the problem. I'm the prime candidate. I'm here for the boobs and the action. And I miss a bunch of that stuff and I didn't care about it. So maybe this is a very well thought out film, but the numbers speak louder than words. It made a third of its budget at the box office. You would think that the appeal of Pamela Anderson at the time, it would have been enough to boost it into even some sort of profit. So I think it's part of a marketing problem. I think that she was working off of like a bad script and Jay, this is gonna hurt you, but she's not the best actress. Come on, <laughs> you never seen Snapdragon? No. One day, we'll do that <laughs> one too. All of those things, it's not a great movie. Was it the worst movie I've seen? No, we've seen so many bad movies. And I think that's part of the problem. People haven't seen enough bad, bad movies, movies yeah. to understand where this rakes up. When you watch fucking head cheerleader, dead cheerleader, whatever it is, barbed wire is fucking awesome. Avengers Endgame. IMDb has this as like 44th worst movie ever made. Are you fucked? Like, I just can't fathom how that's even possible. And people even say like, Batman Forever, also one of the worst movies ever made. Watch some of the dog shit shark movies that we watch from Mark Polonia, honestly. But at the same time, this was like marketed, put it out and it was held to a higher standard. And again, and I think we disagree, but I don't think it lived up to that standard. I'm caving on this one. <laughs> it hits all the beats of the comic book and nails them perfectly. Maybe that's why the comic book isn't around as much <laughs> yeah, these days. It was like, <laughs> it ended its run before this movie even came out. But I mean, if you wanna go and you wanna see Pamela Anderson naked in a few scenes and in different ways, and if you wanna see a hot blonde running around with her clothes on, but there's very tight revealing clothes and you wanna see her kicking some ass, Watch Blood Rain. Blood Rain. The adventure begins. But this movie, I don't know. I think it's better left to memory. And that's unfortunate. I hate revisiting movies and thinking that. I want to watch a movie and remember exactly what I remembered as a kid. I'm like, I fucking love this. It's not the case with this one, unfortunately. That saddens me. So I'm going to give this two package checks out of five. Camille. Package check. <laughs>
Good night, get off! Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's not the worst movie. Nostalgia, I don't know if it's worth going back for like a nostalgia watch. And honestly, I don't think anyone, people really watched it to even have that nostalgia. <laughs> hey, you were born in 1984 and you specifically watched like Baywatch and you're like, I need her in another movie and badass in bondage with guns. Do you think it would have done better if she didn't like do nudity and other things? Like this was the big- Like the only nudity she had done. Yeah, up until that point. A hundred percent. Maybe she overexposed herself. So I'm gonna give this two dial pad sidekicks out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on Barbed Wire. Did you know the comics? Did you know this movie even existed? Is this as bad as all the critics make it out to be? Let us know in the comments. Like this video. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with everything here on Bloodbath TV.